Alright, what's going on y'all? New set of course is coming out soon, so I wanted to revisit one of the most exciting decks from the early days of uh, the Innistrad sets, which is this Black Red Vampires aggressive slanted build. Uh, got a bunch of Vampire Tribal stuff, we're making a lot of blood tokens, doing everything that theme in the last two sets wants to do. And we're fairly aggressive about it. We have our six one drops here with the Pit Fighter as a 2 1 and the Epicure as a 1 1 that deals damage and makes a blood one of the ATBs. We have the Bloodcaster, which flips quite a bit because we're generating so much blood, which then can turn all our blood into 2 2 flyers and attack the opponent down. Blood Tithe Harvester, 2 mana 3 2, good aggressive stats, also doubles as a removal spell as long as we have enough blood to kill their creature. Bloodthirsty Adversary, not from Innistrad, but one of the better vampires in Standard at the moment. Um, haste can flash back your removal spells. Also have Inscription of Ruin as one of our removal spells. Definitely not the most efficient removal, but it doubles as a Mind Rot in the control matchups, so that's why I am preferring it here. Also some more efficient removal with Bloodsheep's Thirst and Infernal Grasp. Florian is our main card advantage engine. If you haven't seen this before, at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the amount of life your opponents lost this turn. So you have your big combat step, you deal a bunch of damage with your aggressive creatures, then you get to look at that many cards off your deck and take one. Um, just until end of turn, though, so you do have to play it right away, you have to be wary of mana concerns. And then on the top end, we've got a hodgepodge of different good 4-drop vampires. Not really sure at the moment which ones are better and which ones are worse, but I am sure these are all decent. Immersturm Predator might be a little weak into the uh, Exile meta uh, with, what is it, Obliv Rites of Oblivion and Meat Hook Massacre and all that. This might not be ideal, but we do have a good amount of small creatures to sack to it, and sometimes the Indestructible is good. Against green, for instance, this is pretty solid. And it is Graveyard Hate, which comes up sometimes as well. Uh, Anya turns all our blood into drain effects and gives us more blood whenever a vampire enters and is a just 4 mana 4 5, which is pretty huge. Also, huge Purveyor, 4 mana 5 6, Flample. Uh, does have the slight downside of giving your opponents blood, but usually not that relevant as we're mowing them down quickly. And one Olivia on the top end. Interesting interaction, if your Olivia revives a uh, legendary vampire, then your opponent can remove Olivia and you still get the creature that you reanimate, because it says when you don't control a legendary vampire. So if you reanimate your Anya or your Florian, then they just stick around and you're fine, or your Henrika. Uh, 24 lands, plus 2 Agadim's Awakenings, because we have a big curve of creatures here. Uh, 2 of each creature land, nothing too exciting there. Uh, yeah, that is the deck. Let's go try it out here. A little sketchy, keeping this with only two lands, but the blood token from the Harvester can help us find more if we don't, so I think I'll take it. There's one. Alright, our opponent does nothing. I think we're just attacking with haste here. Take five. Probably loot away one of these with our blood token. to ensure we hit the land next turn to cast one. Uh, which is it? Just the second predator, I suppose. This is the meat hook deck, so predator's probably not ideal. Though graveyard hate is pretty good into them as well. Alright, we miss the uh, untapped land, but we do find something else to do this turn. Which, I guess we'll play this pre-combat, then we can find another land. Opponent trades for my 3-2. No, they jump and make a treasure. Uh, 
could have meat hook for three here, which would be kind of devastating. No, they just want Lolf. Okay. Florian having first strike is pretty good into that. Uh, is Henrika any good here? If we play Anya out, then we can sack the Harvester to take out one spider, and then we guaranteed kill Lolf. No, that doesn't work. Because they'd block Florian, the first strike would put Lolf up to three counters, and then we're only doing two. I think what I want to do is just play Predator and attack face, ignore the Lolf. I guess we should attack first because we have Florian in play. I'll just trade off their spiders here. Not a whole lot we can do about that, I don't think. My pond eye, the generous well, I'll take a land, I guess. And so we can play the Pit Fighter out as well. Enrica probably not aggressive enough here. Professor, fine. Probably try and sack it so they can make more spiders with Loth and keep her around. Nope, Loth is gone. Okay. <laughs> At least there is blood, a gift in exchange for loyalty. I think we're saving Blood Chief's thirst for another planeswalker. I don't think I want to attack with the Pit Fighter, so we have something to um, sack to our Predator later. So these are the attacks. We can exile the Loth from their bin for Blood on the Snow purposes. Want to double chumps? Fine. Is a combat trigger, yeah. Is there a point to playing out either of these at the moment? We're probably just sitting on Blood on the Snow here for next turn. So I think we're passing. We have enough pressure on board at the moment. Two points of damage in before they sweep. Right of oblivion. Okay. Do they have something to stop these? No. With the right of oblivion, I think I want to attack with the hive here. Just to get that out of their graveyard. We can have Vanishing Burst here. Yeah, but that's fine. I'm gonna land here and still play the Bloodcaster. Which gives us some value if they do have the Sweeper here. Obviously, them taking out my creature land there is not great. Yeah, there's the sweeper. I get three blood tokens. They get a professor. I play Anya out here. She just gets... Uh, ...writsed. Probably whatever I play here just gets writsed. 
Marika can attack through a mascot exhibition and gives us another card here. So we'll start there. And not great. We'll probably cycle that away. Back the right on Henrika, that's fine. Okay, if we play Anja now, we can get them down to three, which seems good. And then we can finish them off with the adversary. They might have another Vanishing Burst open. Oh, I have in the bin for the adversary. No spells. Okay, so we'll stick with Anya for the moment. Anya, of course, plays her own blood on the snow, and if we untap with her, we do have lethal. Counts. Do they have another right of oblivion? They do not. I think we've got them then. And I do it two more times. Easy burn them out from seven. Alright, that is one of the better decks of the format, too. I will take that win. Seems promising. That's fine. We have a nice curve. All sort of. Go 1, 2, 2, 2. That's all you really need in your aggressive deck, isn't it? Alright, there's our 3 drop. Curving out just like we drew it up. Opponent plays Luminarch Aspirin, of course. Blood Tithe Harvester can block it next turn. And of course threatens to remove it if they don't put the counter on it, or whatever their other creature play is. Obviously they're not going to trade here for my Pit Fighter. another blood token next turn, so if they do make this bigger or play an Adeline or something, we might be screwed. Or they might just Skyclave at my Harvester. Portable Hole. Brutal. So that allows them to remove my 2-drop and play another one of their own. Joke's on you, opponent. I don't have any spells. Can't attack into Thalia. Do you think Florian's the play here, though? It's most mana efficient, especially after I bolt that in. Can trade with Thalia at least, or block the Luminarch if they put the counter elsewhere. Never mind, my opponent just has it all, and this is not a game we can win. Kind of the beauty of Mono White, when you have it, you have it. Probably find something to fill turns two and three. And another Lack Source for Henrika. That's a good two drop. Oh, 
Prince on Mono White and still playing Snowlands for some reason. Um, I think I can let them have the Luminarch for one turn. It might become more mana efficient to kill it next turn. a start. Well, we can still attack into the 2-2. It did become more mana efficient, would you look at that? And yes, I'm going to pay 5 life to kill this Luminarch. Unless they'd like to trade with my Pit Fighter. can trade our pit fighter for their worst creature here. Die. Adversary. Well, it's pretty good at stopping us from beating them down, so I think I will take the trade here. Choosing each player sacrifices a creature. I get a blood token. They don't get to gain three life. They would trade either way if I attacked there, almost certainly. Henrika here. I'm going to take the card in one life here. And then probably attack with a bugbear. Seems okay. My opponent's stuck on two lands, which is probably going to lose them the game. Yeah, I don't think I want to play that and Infernal Grasp over just attacking here. Of course, if we get a land, we can do Olivia things. Yeah, Adeline's good, but we'll probably just kill her here. Uh, adversary is nice. We can just Adversary into Grasp. Seven, we transform Henrika. We go back up to ten. That uh, should be all she wrote. Yeah, no, you, you can't attack there, bud. I have creature lands, and you're dead anyway. I didn't know it, of course, but yeah. Sometimes they stumble and we curve out of the game. Don't think that'll do it. That's somewhat better. Send back an Agademes. Not a great hand, of course, but about as good as I can expect at six. Our opponent's playing Mono White badly. This card is not one of the better one drops. They went first and didn't mulligan though, so we might still lose here. And this one also does not have the third land, lovely. Don't really care about Thalia. I think I'm playing the Agademes here. So I don't have anything else to use the mana for. I don't really want to loot away any of these cards. Guess I could loot away a land. It's not terrible. 
but having blood in play has value if they acquire a creature with large toughness for the harvester to kill. So I think this is the play. And let's see. Are we the beatdown? Against Mono White on the play, I don't believe so. We should have more value around. And once we get to the Blood Vial, that should stonewall them pretty effectively. So I think I'm passing here. We can threaten to double block Thalia. They might have a second Thalia though, and they probably don't. And, well, hopeful Initiate's not legendary. So I think I'd rather trade here. Adversary is a 3-1. Sure. See how it looks into my 5-6. I don't think I want to use the Harvester on the 3-1. They might, uh, Brutal Cathar my 5-6 or something. Even a Skyclave app I think I'd rather hit, as that gives me a 4-4 back, which is still huge on this board. Well, aren't we aggressive? Play more lands in your Mono White decks, kids. Please. Casting your cards is OP. Can't play my Pit Fighter on one, and the double hives are a little awkward, but Harvester into Inscription is probably good enough that I don't want to mulligan here. Or Harvester into Grasp Pit Fighter if our opponent plays a creature. That is a creature. Is it one I want to grasp here, though? Means they have four mana next turn. We can just kill it with Inscription and save the grasp for something else. Against Katilda, Inscription is definitely a kill target creature and not a Mind Rot. But the tempo of this is probably better. The question is, do I need to stop them from having 4 mana this turn, or can I save the Infernal Grasp for something that is bigger and going to stop me from attacking? I think I want to save it. Hedron's fine. And I foretell. It's probably a Starnheim. I'll just grasp the Thorhedron here so it can't block my 2 1. And I think I want to loot away one of these lands. So we'll play the untapped land here. We can loot away the hive. And the question again, do I kill Katilda? Do I mind rot? And let's take out their creature. They have another land here. They could make two angels if they still have Katilda. They still had four cards in hand, plus this draw, so discarding two is not going to slow them down that much. Circle for my 3-2, sure. Send away the tapped land. Uh, 
Now that inscription is discarded is pretty tempting. And then we can cycle the pit fighter into the other land. Seems okay. Better than attacking for three with a hive, I believe. Guess we should do this first. Try and find something a bit higher impact here. Well, that's pretty good. Do I just want to play both of these instead of Inscription? I think so. So, that Pit Fighter play basically turned that Swamp into a Bloodcaster. Which, not exactly the epitome of value, but we'll take it. Yeah, that's two angels. Can I find more removal? No, I cannot. If I get one more land, I can kick this, right? Yeah. I think I'm just passing then. They want to hit me for eight. Okay. Not really a lot we can do against two four fours with vigilance. Those tokens are going to be very annoying as well. All right. They've got too much going on there. They successfully went over the top of us. We did not have a very aggressive draw. Yeah, sure. I have a one drop. Things to do later. Three lands. None of these lands have felt particularly exciting yet. Which is part of the issue of trying to run two color aggro. As the slow lands are not very conducive to that. I'm just going to Vanishing Burst my 2 1. Or have they just not read this card? Unclear. Probably just haven't read it. And they already get to two for one me. Which, they would just hold that back and block whenever I attacked. There's no need to try and hold on to the pit fighter. It's not going to do any better later. Big enough to go through our Florian. We top a black source, the purveyor can stop it. Guess this is a more aggressive black white if they're playing Adeline. Farmhand goes into the control versions too, is just a 1 1 that draws a land. Though they're also not playing Snowlands. So no blood on the snow. So yes, they must be fairly aggressive. All sorts of creatures getting all sorts of value. Definitely seems more powerful than what we're trying to do here. not a black source. Now they trade their 1-1 one, one for my 3-3, three, three, so then we're dead. So I guess running lands, Olivia can still technically keep us in it. As long as we're able to get the purveyor down next turn. If we can't, then we just get run over by Adeline way too quickly. Ah, disgusting. 
Play by 1-1, one, one, draw 2. Seems good. Zero black cards so far. I think we actually double block Adeline here. Especially with the second Florian in hand. Right. And we can't attack through their 2-3 flyer either, so we can't even draw cards off our Florian. Doesn't feel great here. Yeah, this welcoming vampire triggering only once a turn seems really mediocre until it's not. Like, if you're trying to be super aggressive with it, it doesn't work very well. But if you're doing something more uh, laid back, like our opponent here is, uh, getting more value, uh, it just becomes a 3-mana 2-3 flyer that gets you a free card every turn. And even blowing me out in combat, because they weren't far ahead enough. Well, that can kill Adeline. But then we're still losing. No, oh, I'm done here. There's absolutely no way we come back from this, even if we get to Olivia next turn. We don't have any real high-impact vampires in the graveyard. I think I'm going to call it there for the video. Right. In conclusion, this does not feel quite powerful enough to keep up with most of what Standard is doing. As many fun and cool vampires as Wizards printed, they did not quite make this a top deck in any format. Is it good enough to play? Yes, we got some wins against top decks in the format, but is it going to get better than 50% consistently? I don't think so. Our low end is just not powerful enough into the Luminarch Aspirants and Shambling Ghasts of the world. Uh, everything having two toughness or one toughness just dies to every other creature around. Nothing outsizes the Luminarchs very well. And... A lot of the decks are good enough at gumming up the board and just having more and bigger creatures than you that uh, Florian's not going to draw cards that consistently. Uh, Predator didn't do much. Anya did get to burn our opponent out that one time. Maybe four is a correct number here. Maybe you should just be playing the real big four drops and try and go a bit more mid-range and then bring back your really big four drops with Olivia and drop some of the bad early aggro cards. Not that they're bad in general, they're just bad in the current meta of lots of spamming things that kill blood toughness creatures and all that. But yeah, that was the deck. Thanks for watching.